young. Yeah. Okay. What well, was it? Good memory. Yeah. Um, I was in my in, in our house in New Jersey. We had a in our backyard. We had like this water fountain or bird feeder thing, and I had just gotten the chicken pox, and my mom was screaming at me that I had to go inside because the sun was out. She's like, you're gonna get all marked up for the rest of your life. And then she, she told me to go inside and I ran into the, like we had a basement that led to the first floor. So I went, ran in there and I ran up the staircase and I went straight to my room. And, and I just want you to hear something. Go inside, you're gonna be marked for the rest of your life. You have shared with us that you've been on the street since you were 12. Yeah. And the, tw and the streets <laughs> marked you up. And you have shared that you are a homebody with your husband and your kids, and it's yeah. your happiest times. Yeah. That memory is linked to the life that she is creating now. All of us. My first memory was my fifth, my uh, kindergarten graduation. School, teaching, graduation. I love graduations. I have spoken at so many graduations. I used to be the dean at the campus. I rearranged travel schedules just to speak. When I owned my own school, my graduation ceremony was my pride and joy. There's a reason that we have that first memory. Now, prior to that memory, you have thousands and thousands of other programs that you have no freaking clue where they came from because you can't recite them, but they're stored here. So every time we're speaking, we're talking from that space. So who taught you mom is always right? Or what was it that was taught in the house? I guess, I guess she. Because whenever I didn't listen to her, within that same day, same week, it's like, damn it, if I would've did this, what she asked, this wouldn't happen. See? Program. I'm the last one. Mom is always right. When you hear a client speak from a program, which we saw in one minute she spoke a minimum of five. Ask them, where'd you learn that? Who taught you? And, and, and phrase it for them like that. Who taught you mom was always right? Oh, I learned something else too. My bad. <laughs> okay, remember I told you when you asked us the question, that's when I first found out. It took me 23 years to find out I was born, what did I say? That I didn't know I was born on a Sunday? What I said I didn't know? Oh, where I was born. Okay. Remember I had to look up right. the place? Okay, it took me 23 years to learn it. It also took me 23 years to learn my fa my mom was in foster care when she had me. Remember I always wow. knew, I always knew she didn't know about me or my brother. Right, but, and you I said that knew. mom let the guy go up. No, I said grandma, not mom. Uh -huh. Right, her mom. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Hold yeah, on. Right. Valid. Oh, <laughs> but I always thought she learned about both of us at the hospital, but she didn't. She learned about my brother when she was with my auntie. My auntie was pregnant, so she was going with her sister to go to the hospital, and then she found out she was pregnant. Once again, she fainted. With me, I was like, um, what I asked her? I said, oh, I finally, I finally found out I was born on a Sunday, and I said something else. I forgot what I asked her, this memory of mine. But she was like, yeah, I was in, um, I was in um, foster care with this lady. All I knew is I fainted and I woke up. It's like, what happened? I'm in a hospital. You was in foster care? <laughs> Wait a minute, something I had enough. Now, don't you think that's gonna impact her origin story? Whether you knew it or not, it still impacted. Yeah, because I know all of them had, they, they had a little rough life. Cause my mama, my mama, them didn't always get along with my grandma, and it was like I was always on my grandma's side. Cause I didn't quite understand what was going on, but it's like the older I get, it's like grandma, I'm gonna need you. To like right now, she unblocked. She can't call me. Oh back. yeah, you were doing groceries and letting her stop uh, at her friend's it, house. Yeah, and taking away from study time. Oh, I remember. I, I listen to you guys. I'm in the job of listening. Okay, so. Well, I want you to listen to your clients because they're going to give you programming and you're going to be able to say to them, where did you learn that? Where, who taught you that value? 
Is that a belief that you learn from religion? Is that a belief you learn from fill in the blank? Do you see that these three words can help you phrase questions over and over and over again? Okay, I want you to take out a sheet of paper. This is going to be instant. The first thing you think of, do not think twice. You don't have to rip it out. You're going to keep it. But I need you to just write the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, everybody has a piece of paper? Okay. What vegetable do you most resemble? <laughs> Quick, first thing. What animal do you most resemble? <laughs> These are the first things. So. It's the first thing. What thing do you most resemble? Thing. Any object. I don't even know what to put. First thing that comes to mind. That's the thing that we said about that. Hold on. Let it surface. It's coming from the subconscious. Now, everyone got the three? Now, I want you to look at the three, and I want you to make a value statement around it. Oh, I keep thinking about it. That's all. There's no wrong or right. The subconscious is always right. The subconscious has no age. If you learn something at three weeks old, and you're 33, you're still with that learned behavior or that, that judgment because you overheard your parents at three weeks old arguing about, you know, money problems. Your subconscious has no age. And I need you to learn this. Your subconscious is always in the present moment. Everything you're creating in the present moment, at this moment, is being created from your subconscious at this moment, even though you might have learned that at 13. What value statement do, can you make from those three answers? A belief you have, a judgment you have, a value oh, statement. Yes. I don't know what the heck to write on that. Um. Just come up with a comment. Okay. A judgment, a value statement, a belief. It could be about yourself, it could be about other people. Just whatever comes. Whatever comes to mind. There, no, you no, see, I'm, I'm trying, it, perfect, that's exactly what I want you to do. It's like stream of consciousness. Your client is talking intentionally, but they don't know it. We are always sending messages of what we want to say, what we want to attract. We don't know it. No, no. When we stop to think, that's when we get messed up, because we censor the truth. I don't want you to censor the truth. I want to see what you come up with. One sentence about the three. Oh, One I value put, about I, the three. I put words next to them. No, no. <laughs> make a Me sentence. Too. Make, okay, I'll give you an example. I got one. Wait, before you. Okay. You know, I got my second one was dog. Love okay, what was your vegetable? Corn. Corn. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> okay. Car. I don't eat vegetables. Car and car. Okay. What? And this is about you. You resemble corn. Look how she said, I don't eat vegetables. I didn't ask her to eat herself. I asked her what vegetable she most resemble. And she went to. Something I eat. <laughs> I didn't think about. Oh, what right. I don't you eat went anything. to something that you ate. Dog is what she most resembles as an animal, and car is the thing. Vegetable, only thing she eats. Why, why do you resemble a dog? For what I put, I put loving friend that don't let you down. Okay. And why'd you put a car? I guess that's, you said the first thing that comes to mind. That right. came to what mind. value statement is there around a car? What judgment, what belief, what value? 
He's gonna give me what I need to be. That's oh, right. I, I, why did I know you were gonna say that? <laughs> I actually said that in my head right before you said it. What can you see about Tanisha here? What themes? Don't be afraid. Come on. Wait, but that ain't what I that? That she's reliable? Okay, I'll write it. I'm going to question it. What else? There are values. Yes. Just like she spoke for one minute and we heard programs, you can see programs here. She's a loving friend. Okay. She's picky. Because she, 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 she tries to act like she's not picky. <laughs> Anything else? What'd you write for your value statement? About I don't, yourself. I just had. Yeah, the values around the three things. I did it. You just put the things that I put on the board? Yeah, but for oh. corn, I got bright and sweet. Bright and sweet, okay. To the point. <laughs> so, what else? That adds something. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say bright and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> These are values. What is a value? You have got to know your value statements and you have got to know your client's value statements. And then I'm going to tie it in with this. And I'm going to give you a homework, especially if you're in a couple. What are value statements? I don't want to put something on the board and say it a hundred times and you not know what it is. You stop me. I don't understand. Something you go live by? Something, a tenant that you're going to live by. It's an important thing. It might be a non-negotiable. It's a program that you were taught is super important. Who taught you reliability was important? What is the value around being reliable? Just people around me, period, because ever since I was young, I was always told I'm reliable, so I didn't. I was always told I'm reliable. What do we do when we hear always or never? What was that? It sticks with you, but what is it? Where's my zero to a hundred? Yes. <laughs> Did someone steal my posters? Where's zero to a hundred? That's her. Here it is. <laughs> always reliable. If Tanisha is always reliable, a hundred, what else is she? Zero. Not reliable. Not reliable. Which she isn't right now for your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so is this client going to judge herself? based on her reliability or her non-reliability. Yes. I do, because I don't feel like I'm reliable. I say of I course you theory. don't. And I'm you're proving yourself right myself. by not taking your grandmother to the store and blocking her and telling her, no, we're not stopping at, you know, Shayna's house. She blocked, so I can't tell her. <laughs> okay? <laughs> when you're taught always or never, you are going to beat yourself <laughs> up in that part of your life over and over and over again. It is a value statement that you have. Can you imagine if she's in a relationship with someone and that person is not reliable? Do you think that might be a point of contention in their relationship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She asked, do the dishes? If she asked, pick up dog food, and the person five out of 10 times doesn't do it, she's gonna lose her shit. Why? Because um, she's reliable. She will do it. Why can't? Why That's can't not what you it? said earlier about soulmate. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's zero, but that's zero to 100 because she's gonna think of a time when she didn't do something that someone told her. Right. 
So he's mirroring her and she's beating herself up. I did say that, but I will So that's a value statement right there. I get the last word, I have to be right. And that means zero to 100 that she doesn't get the last word. She doesn't get to be right. And we know, in her case, her mom. Okay, so right there you saw another value statement. We're constantly law of attraction coming out, coming out. So she will attract someone who is not reliable. Or her car cannot be reliable. Because she's not allowed all of the time to be reliable. Because she was told, I'm always reliable. And the only way that the subconscious has to rewrite that is doing it the complete opposite. So when you're not reliable, what do you do to yourself? How do you punish yourself for not being reliable? It depends. Because like, I feel I'm only not reliable to myself. Like, okay, so you take it personally on you. Yeah, because when it's for other people, I complain, but yeah, I'm still doing it. But when it's for myself, Excellent. I'm the opposite. I let myself down, not others. Excellent. Did you see the question that I asked her? Mm -hmm. When you're not reliable, what happens? What do you do? How do you beat yourself up? I said that with conviction. I didn't ask the client to tell me whether or not she thought she was reliable. You want to speak to a client in affirmation. Tell me about a time when you were not reliable. The client has already told you that they're not reliable and that is somewhere where they beat themselves up. Don't be afraid. You don't have to ask permission to the client to tell them something that they just told you. If you're listening closely, you're gonna hear that she doesn't feel she's reliable. My job as an investigator is to find out where, and she said it. I'm reliable for others, I'm not reliable for myself. So Tanisha's inner child, her little girl, step two, what don't you like about person, place, or thing, is your inner child saying what you don't like about yourself is that she's not reliable to herself. Where do you self-betray and not become reliable? Give me a time, a situation, an example. Came ready to work today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of, okay. Or better yet, when you say no to someone else, what does that do for you? How does that make you feel? Mad? Like, Bad. Not a good feeling. Right. So she's, she's blocking her grandmother so that she has a mechanism in which to put herself first. When you are not reliable for yourself, how does it make you feel? Oh, worse. Because I, I personally feel, even though I'm still learning to do it, to put myself and my needs first. Like I'm always putting others before me. And how do you feel when you put yourself first? Good, because I don't do it often. Do you <laughs> I feel great. really great? I do. For a quick second, I really do. Okay, I after the quick second. <sighs> What's her psychological orgasm? <laughs> what do you feel when you put yourself first, truthfully? Guilt. Guilt. <laughs> That's exactly right. Guilt. The minute you feel guilt, you're like, ah, ah, ah! We love to beat ourselves up. I don't have the poster of the prostitute archetype, but it might be in your packet. If not, I'll get it for you because I've created more slides for the packet. And um, it should just look like this. And it's black. If you don't have it, take out your chart. And can you bring the computer here so I can do his just to show him? Where do you have the black moon in your chart? Oh, 
Yeah, I don't think you have the handout. So take this one out. Black Moon is, Black moon is right here. Yes. That is your psychological orgasm. <laughs> Really? Okay, what the heck is that? What, what is that? Yeah. Oh, I found one. Oh, I what is, yeah. In the chart, where you have the black moon <clears throat> is where you punish yourself. Hey, that's my birthday. You got my birthday? No, it don't. And <laughs> get off. Oh, it does. Of course it's your birthday. That's you. Oh. The daytime oh, and place you It says your, your name on this. Oh, that's right you. Here. This is all your paper. information. That's you. Oh, yeah. This yeah, whole thing. Like, on the, on the Oh, the black moon. Right. Moon. right, that's yours. That's where you have guilt. Is it in the eleventh house? Yes. Okay, the eleventh house is the house of groups of people. So she gets her psychological orgasm when she puts other people first. What's mine? That's you mine. have it in your sixth house. What's that? So work, health, beating yourself up physically. So this is always our birthday. Yes, that is the day you were born, the time you were born, and the place you were born. Yeah, well. What's your birthday, Gerson? December 26th. Oh, my what God, year? It's the day before my husband's birthday. Oh, he's a baby. What time? <laughs> 6 o'clock p.m. Where? I'm looking at my makeup. Brazil. Yeah, see, this is what Okay, hold on. I'm going to put Brazil. And then. Yours is 1232. Okay, what's it called? Yeah, but Bello or Resort. I'm looking at this e number. This L number matches my birth. Oh. Oh. Three or Resort. It's like all right. I don't remember if I gave you. I don't know about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have this, I think. I don't know. Okay. Is that okay. I don't know about that thing now. Okay. So I'll print this for you. Yours is in the first house. So is mine. But you know what? That's your body. That means you beat up yourself physically. But look. What Where you have the black moon is a place that you were taught to self-loathe, to hate yourself, to feel guilty, to feel bad. You have the chart of the houses. Take it out and cross-reference. That's why I give you this stuff. Okay, I gave you one and it had all the houses. So find the house and that is the area where you get off by punishing yourself. That's where you're, oh my God, oh my God, the worse I behave in that area, the better. I have it like Gerson in the first house. I am my worst enemy. I beat myself up, I don't take care of my body. No wonder I have cancer, people. Because the cancer was my way of asking me subconsciously, my inner child was saying, hey, can you take care of your body now? It could also be your personality. What the? But mine literally made my birthday. <laughs> Yours matches? Mine is, mine is the fourth house. The four, it has to be the fourth home, house. Home, private life, your home. heritage, family, yeah, yeah, yeah. psychological foundation, subconscious matters. Marsha's has to be the fourth house. <laughs> because you were kicked out. And you want to know the story of the black moon? You want to know the myth? Okay, if you know the myth, you know what you're living. Okay, and then you layer the sign. The black moon, her name is Lilith, and she was the first wife of Adam, before Eve. And she always wanted to be on top when they had sex. She was dominant. And Adam was pissed. She was, he, he would beg her, please Lilith, let me be on top. And she would say, no, I'm dominant. A, the prostitute. It's where you want to be in charge and you're going to beat yourself up because you're being in charge, because you don't have permission subconsciously. Okay? And so one day Adam says, I'm going to go tell on, on you to God. And she's like, you're such a pussy. Go, tell on me. Uh -huh. God says, Adam, bring Lilith over. And Lilith comes and is like, what do you want, God? Fuck you. This is where you tell fuck you to God. And you have to punish yourself. Why? Because it's your original sin. I taught you that the other day. The original sin is where you wanted to experience your life. That's this. 
She wants to experience through sex, and she has a very sexual connotation. If you have a black moon in the eighth house, it's usually a very sexual house. If you have it in the fifth house, it could be that you have a lot of partners. You like sex, but you're open about it. It's fine. So God says, Lilith, if you don't let Adam be on top, I'm going to send you into exile. She's like, I don't care. Send me to exile. So he sends her to exile. And every day, she births 10,000 children. <laughs> OK? And at <laughs> night, what do you think she does with them at night? Kill them. She eats them. Oh, OK. Oh, my God. What the heck? She eats them. No, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's why I like Greek mythology. That's from Greek That's that, all of the mythology, if you understand the, the mythology, you're going to understand your psyche. Because those are the gods. So this is one of your gods. This is the gods that the dominatrix. This is the god that wants to make you in charge. This is the god that likes sex. This is the god that, and people, and I've had many clients like that. Anyone have it in their in the fifth house? I have a gold moon. No, not the gold moon, the black moon. This one. She's in the sixth house. OK, anyone have it in the fifth house? The fifth house black moon can mean that you have abortions or miscarriages. You eat your children. They're never able to fr have fruition. So we're putting together the pieces. Tanisha was told she's reliable. The black moon doesn't want to be reliable. The black moon wants to do what she wants, when she wants, and tell you, fuck off, grandma. So she has it in a house that is the house of community. So I'm going to do everything for everybody else, but really behind the scenes, I'm saying, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. So then she gets guilt for feeling bad, goes zero to 100, and her whole drama of her life is around this guilt. Guilt is what I call a placeholder emotion. This is a Francisism. Guilt. Place holder emotion. What is it holding the place of? Okay, happiness and freedom. Yes, that's not what I'm looking for, but actually, no, it's whatever you're feeling guilty of. The true feeling. She doesn't fucking want to take her grandmother. Screw her grandmother. Let her mother get an Uber or call one of the other kids in the family. That's the true feeling. It holds the place of what you're truly feeling. But why when you say it, don't it supposed to make you feel better? But, <laughs> it made her feel but, <laughs> and this is the key, is not socially acceptable. It is not socially acceptable for her to block her grandmother and say, fuck you, grandma. Fuck. It's not socially acceptable for you to have sex with your kids. People do it. Yeah. It's not socially acceptable to want to be Jafar. I'm Jafar, so is he. Oh, I'm the boss, I'm God. First house. It used to not be socially acceptable to be homosexual. Black moon rules homosexuality. It wasn't okay to be a slut. The black moon is a slut. Now we don't slut shame. It is not socially acceptable. And wherever you have the black moon in your chart, you have a value system and you beat yourself up and you judge yourself because you are that exact thing that you're not supposed to be. So she's not reliable, whether it's to her grandmother or to herself. Somewhere, the client let me know that she is not reliable. And you can get a client to answer three questions that have nothing to do with their situation, and you can have a whole session. So what do we do to help Tanisha become 48 to 52 with reliability? Step six of the model. What's step six? What do we have them write? Oh, oh. And actually, step four first. 
Oh, your rules? Yeah, the yeah. rules. But before the rules, we need her to define reliable. I want you to define reliable in measurable terms. And yes, you do feel better when you say fuck you. But it's a psychological orgasm. So if you get off, if you have sex, and you have an